Serialize a given binary tree to a file and des deserialize it back to a tree. Make sure the original and deserialized trees are identical. So serializing is writing a, the tree to a file. Deserializing is reading from a file and reconstructing it in the memory. Serialize a tree into a list of integers and then deserialize it back from the list to a tree. For simplicity's sake, there's no need to write the list to the files. Okay, so we have these examples. Uh, we have this tree as the input. This is how it looks like with the different types of traversals. And I go into, I explain these traversals in the intro video for trees, so you can find them there or Google them. And this is a deserialization step. Okay. So this tree comes out the same way in shape. It, it, it went in. Same here. There's a de de degenerate tree. There's a bi balanced, uh, balanced tree. It's a degenerate tree, which means it looks like a like this. Um, so this, these are the different ways of traversing it, and they basically want us to convert them back and forth. And so for the solution, uh, I thought the naive solution was worth mentioning because it's something you might actually come up with if you haven't seen this problem before. So use the naive ways to store one of the traversals into the file when serializing the tree and read the traversal back to create a tree when deserializing it. Now, the issue is, any one of the traversals is not unique. So what they're trying to say is that two different trees can have the same in order traversal. They're different, but they have the same traversal. And the same goes for either of these. So for a simple example, a right, if a tree was degenerate to the right. So basically if, if this was all left instead, right? It was basically what they're trying to say. They look the same, right? When you, when you store them, when you, when you when you traverse them, like uh, they come out, out to be the same thing, even though they are different by shape, right? It's on the left, not the right. And so they would look the same in order, pre-order, and even post-order, but they are very different. However, two traversals, if you do two different types of traversals, so you combine in order and pre-order, for instance, you can uniquely represent and reconstruct a tree. So naively, you might say, okay, we want to do two traversals. So for serialization, you store both the in order and pre order, and then place a delimiter to separate them. Then to deserialize, you pick each node from the pre order traversal, make it root, find its index in the in order traversal. The ones on the left will be part of the left subtree. The ones on the right will be part of the right subtree. And then you got the solution, but you had to use twice the space of the original tree. So the optimized path is to not do that; is to do it one one shot it, and. Now, the way to one-shot this problem is by storing the pre-order traversal and a marker for null pointers. So you don't just store the tree. You Everywhere there is nothing, you track, you keep track of when, of null pointers, okay, in your uh, serialized ver version. So the marker is used to identify the null values, the null nodes of a tree. And now null is not a string value, but we can create a marker for it in our uh, code. And it's helpful for deserializing the binary tree. We use the pre-order, so root, left, right, traversal, to serialize the whole tree. While deserializing it, it's easy to reconstruct the tree using pre-order traversal. And start by creating roots, then it's left and right children, respectively. The pre-order traversal comes under depth-first search. Now, here's how we implement the algorithm. You do DFS, serialize the individual nodes to the stream, pre-order traversal, serialize the marker to represent a null pointer. And then we're considering this tree below. So we're going to use these markers, right, uh, to denote null, null, null nodes, OK? And it will look like this in pre-order traversal. This same tree will come out, turn out to this. So these markers mean, oh, there's nothing here, right? All right? And to deserialize it, we use the pre-order traversal, create a new node for every null marker node. Uh, encounter, encountering a marker introduces a null node, all right? So in code, we have the serialize function that takes the root of a binary tree. This is the stream that we're going to store, right? Where we can store arrays, basically, as strings in memory, so in storage, uh, long-term storage. So we construct the stream and return it. And we use this recursive function, remember, it's the DFS, where we pass in the root, pass in the stream we're populating, right, with the DFS algorithm. And it's over here. Our marker, we use M. And uh, we distinguish between very different markers with this number, uh, integer. Now we take the node, take the stream. If it's null, right, then we've just met, um, we just saw a, uh, 
we're at a leaf basically. So add a marker, add M, increment M, okay, return the string. So that's the terminating condition for the DFS. And that will happen when we reach the end of the, the node. For instance, when we pass in this tree, right, we get to 100 first, right? So this is not going to trigger because node isn't 100, isn't null. Instead, what's going to happen is we push the data 100. So now we see that we just pushed it in there. And then we call it again for the left-hand side with the string. All right. And then for the left-hand side, it's going to come here and push 50. So you see that it's just going to keep coming, right? See, so we get to, I'm stopping at this point for now. And that's how we do pre-order traversal, right? Node left, right. Okay. So you complete a node, complete everything on the left subtree before you get to the right subtree. That's a pre-order traversal, traversal. And so when we get 25, we finally reach a leaf node. So we have nulls on both, both ends. So it's going to roll on roll. The recursive stack is going to unroll. And now we hit a null, we push in a marker, one, then, and that was from a recursive call. So then it's going to come back here again and do it for the right, this recursive call as well. And so that's going to hit another null. M is going to increment again, and then come back and start to unfurl and go back up. Okay. Go back up, then come to the right-hand side of 50, the last, the last one with the right-hand side. Do the same thing. Go to M3, go to M4, push M4, then go back to 100 and finally start evaluating the right subtree and come down to 200, then M5. Remember, you always finish the left before you go right, and so on. Always finish the left before you go right. It's pre-order traversal. Okay, that's it. So that's how this entire stream is populated for the serialized step. And now for the deserialized step, we have the deserialized tree. We come over here. Well, actually, the deserialized step starts here. We pass in the stream that we just constructed, that we took the time to make over here, our serialized tree. We pass it in, and then we reverse it. Why do we reverse it? Because we want to be able to, well, we'll call this recursive function, just the stream this time. I return the node. It's going to return the, the root node for the serialized tree. And in the de this definition, the reason we reversed earlier was so that whenever we pop, we're taking the, the root. We're starting from the top, not the bottom, because normally pop takes takes this out. So we reverse so that we can start from here. And when we take it out, we check the value. If it's a marker, we know that we have a null, uh, something null. But in this case, in the case of 100, it's not. So this is, isn't going to trigger. Instead, it's going to create a new tree node here and then call the left with the same stream. Remember, this removed what was there prior. So it's going to remove 100, put it in there. And then for the left of 100, right, it's going to call it for the stream again. Now, the stream doesn't have 100. 50 is going to be popped. Again, so this is like recursive. It's going to happen again. 50 is going to be popped. It's not null. So it's going to come here and create a new node for 50 and do the left again for 50. Okay, just 25. This is going to call again. And then this time we're finally going to hit M1 and M2. Hit the leaf node. Then go back up and do the right side for 50 and so on. Okay, and rinse and repeat till we are done. And that's the end. We're quite, quite an ingenious uh, solution. A lead code hard, all right, and accur accurately so. But uh, let's look at the time complexity. So we did this in one hop for both cases. So in both cases, we're only looking at every node once, so O of n. And it's O of 2n, but again, you drop the constant factor uh, in time complexities and big O notation. So we end up with O of n. And then space complexity is O of h, where h is the height of the tree. Now, the height for, for a balanced tree, right, it's going to be a log of n, right? Because the height of the tree is going to be the logarithm of, the, of uh, the total number of nodes for a ba perfectly balanced tree. Otherwise, in a degenerate tree like we had here, right, the height is going to be equal to the number of nodes in the tree. Now to give some additional thoughts here, there's a standard way of storing for heaps, heaps and I have a whole series on heaps, uh, which are priority queues. Uh, they are stored in an array, and we can use the same rules to store the tree if we know that is a complete tree from the, from the start. Okay. That's all. Like, comment, subscribe, share.
upvote, right? And see you in the next one.